Murder Mine is a PS1-styled Roblox horror game where you get murdered in a mine. As a Roblox horror game in the present day, Murder Mine is pretty solid, but unfortunately, it's one of those games where I found myself appreciating it more than enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, there were many aspects of the game that were pulled off successfully. The visual style alone is enough to catch somebody's eye, and there was clearly a great amount of effort incorporated there. However, there was one particular problem with Murder Mine that heavily leaves a stain on the overall quality of the experience. One highly destructive problem that's seen in a lot of Roblox horror games. And in Murder Mind's case, it's especially tragic because simply put, it almost ruins what could have been a perfectly fine game. Could you guess what it is? Yeah, it's the part of the Roblox horror game where you have to find items in a maze while the creature chases you. I'm Bredian and I talk about niche Roblox games and today we're talking about Murder In My Mind. You thought I was you? The plot of Murder Mine revolves around you investigating a mine after their communications mysteriously stopped. For the first portion of the game, you're basically just doing a bunch of puzzles in order to get into the Murder Mine, because the elevator is broken. What I immediately noticed and took a liking to initially was how the puzzles, for the most part, weren't annoying to get through. I felt as if I was able to use my brain to figure yeah. out puzzles rather than aimlessly wandering around a maze and hoping that I would get lucky and find the next item that I need. I mean, these puzzles aren't hard, but that's perfectly fine. They keep things moving as to not bore the player. Also, this is a game for kids. It would suck if the first puzzles of the game were really hard and annoying to do, because then everybody would click out of the game before they even saw the monster. When you take the elevator and descend into the murder mine, you're greeted with the dead body being dragged off screen. You have to blow open a wall with TNT, and then you come face to face with the Miner Man. Yeah. Oh. And after this chase is when the game really starts to take a dip. Yeah, it's the maze where you have to collect items while the monster is chasing you. You have to collect five planks of wood in order to build a bridge across the chasm. Coincidentally, there are only five planks of fucking wood in this entire mine. If the murderous miner starts chasing you, then you're going to have to run away as fast as you can. Or you're going to have to slip into one of those little hiding places that he's unable to slip into. I like how the miner has his own little chase theme and a scream to start off the chase with him. This was effective the first time that we saw him, but since this is a fetch quest segment, him popping up constantly got fucking annoying after a while. The mine is dark, and it's a mine, so the layout is confusing, and a lot of the planks are hidden and tucked away in corners that you're likely to miss. Also, if you die to the miner man, you get teleported all the way back to the elevator part. You know, the start of the entire fucking segment. It's almost borderline insulting how the game decides to throw this fetch quest segment into your face halfway through the game. It's like, oh yeah, we got you invested in the first part of the game, now we're gonna throw in a fetch quest in your face that takes 20 to 30 minutes to complete since we already have a firm grasp on you. Like, come on game. The majority of Roblox players already click out of a game before the 10 minute mark. It takes well over 10 minutes to get to this point of the game. You might as well just reward us for sticking through. We're only admiring your game. Sorry. And I mean, it's not a total fetch quest through and through like another Roblox horror game that did that. There's this cool Resident Evil 4 style room where you have to dodge these blades in order to get an electric screwdriver. Kind of a nice throwback to those old style games that had levels like that. Okay, but besides that part, which I like because it reminded me of Resident Evil 4. This wooden plank part sucks. They should have at least added more than just five planks that would spawn. What are the odds that you need exactly five planks to build a bridge, and there's only five planks in this entire fucking murder mine? Seriously? I mean, the bridge isn't even built very up to OSHA standards anyways. One of the planks is sideways. At that point, why not just pull off the sheet metal from the walls? Or better yet, just pull the planks off of a barricaded door and use those instead. That would be a, actually a nice way to get a plank or two. So after that you have to do some spider puzzle that involves trying to make a concoction that will burn some mutant radioactive spiders to death. And also you have to fix some wires along the way in order to scare off the giant spider in the middle. You know what's nice here? The wires that need to be fixed have a little sparkle effect on them. And they're clearly visible despite being little fucking wires. They're not like those goddamn planks of wood, which are literally massive, but you can't see them because they're tucked out of your view. Also, another reason why the spider segment is better than the segment with the miner is because the spiders are actually easy to avoid. They each have a preset pattern, and once you learn it, you can easily use this knowledge to evade them. And also, the spawn point isn't 10 million kilometers away. And also, this area of the map is just generally way smaller than the Miner's Haven, because that part of the game is almost as big 
as my appreciation for niche Roblox games. After scaring away the big spider that's guarding the pickaxe, you strip mine your way out of the abandoned mine shaft and find yourself at the top of a canyon. I like this part of the game because it was nice and rewarding after being trapped in the mine for so long. The big and open canyon is a nice contrast to the claustrophobic and dark atmosphere of the mines. There's also these goofy little boulders that can crush you if you're not careful, but they're easy enough to avoid unless you're a cartoon character. Also, the ending of the game is rewarding because you get to ride the train. And there's this cool little cutscene. It's sweet, if you ignore the bad parts of the game. Murder Mine is by no means a poorly made game. However, the middle segment of it is legitimately near unbearable. But, I do have to give credit where credit is due. This game was the developer's first complete solo game. He made it by himself. Can you believe that? You know, it's funny that whenever I have a negative opinion on a game, people are quick to pull out the excuse that it's only made by one or two people. As if that somehow makes the game less bad? Like, if I play Chain, knowing that it was only made by two people, would that make the game good? Like, oh my god guys, once I play Chain and told myself that it was only made by two people, the sound of the chainsaw magically dropped and also the game was way more than just wandering around a maze for 30 minutes. I had to bring up Chain. I didn't want to initially, but as I played Murder Mine, I did notice some parallels. Both games have an annoying segment where you have to find objects while a big guy chases you. Granted, this problem isn't exactly limited to these two games. It's extremely common to find in Roblox horror games nowadays. But I do need to add that this trope is extremely harmful to a game's quality when done wrong. Chain is probably one of the worst examples out there as essentially the entire game only consists of a fetch quest, and the chainsaw is also really annoying. Murder Mine is a game that could have maintained a consistent quality through and through, but randomly decided to add a massive fetch quest right as soon as the monster showed up. It's kind of like if your friend of three years randomly decided to wake up and start being an asshole to you one day. You still love him and you put up with his behavior out of obligation. However, you're still left with this feeling of frustration, wondering why he would start acting like that out of nowhere when things were going so well the other day. It almost hurts more after seeing the potential of how kind he could be at times, only to be slammed in the face with the very opposite of that. You get this feeling in your head that maybe you should reciprocate his negative attitude rather than being patient with him. The equivalent of leaving the game instead of just passively pushing through or looking up a walkthrough. It feels painful, but you keep telling yourself that things might get better afterwards as long as you make it through today. I guess I just wish he was more consistent. Anyways, Murder Mine was pretty nice overall, but it does have that nasty tumor attached to it, and it really bogs the game down. Regardless, this is still one of the better Roblox horror games that I've played recently if that means anything. If you play this game, be sure to grab as many of your friends as possible, as the game allows 8 players, and I think that it would be more fun and also way easier with 8 people. I'm Bredian, and I talk about niche Roblox games, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye. You're playing Minecraft in a cave looking for diamonds. That's funny. I'm in the same cave looking for mine.